Called to preach the gospel as a young teenager in 1951, Erlo Stegen has, by the grace of God, remained faithful through six decades of ministry. Beginning by visiting houses and telling people about salvation through Jesus Christ, God blessed his obedience with revival in 1966 and has expanded the work of Kwasizabantu to every continent on the globe. He is a true example of what God can do through a man who is obedient to Him. Erlo's paternal grandfather, Heinrich Christoph Stegen, was born on 11 December 1849 in Stotthof a Mellinghausen. On 25 June 1883, as a young man of 33 years of age, he and his wife Catherine, born Rickman, left Hamburg for South Africa. Our grandfather Stegen and also our forefathers from my mother's side, Wittuft, they came to South Africa not as settlers, but as people to be a help to the missionaries, to further the gospel. Because in Hammondsburg, Louis Harms experienced a revival, and that's out of that revival, a mission seminary was built, and it was mostly people who were worshiping with him that were sent out to South Africa. Like that, our father and mother came, they had just married. When he came here, he didn't have anything, no money, nothing. He was a herd boy. He herded the cattle and the sheep. And my grandmother, she was a kitchen girl. She worked in the kitchen. That's how they lived for years and years. And later on, they bought a small place, a small farm, I think about two hectares. And that's where they lived for quite a few years. And then they moved to Balani. Later on, my granddad passed away and left. Our grandmother with 12 children was still alive. My father, he was three years old when his father died and the elder brothers left home and he stayed with the homestead with the farm and he worked hard we didn't have much he wasn't like other people enjoying themselves and living for themselves he lived for other people he always helped neighbors and needy people and we grew up like that. Erlo's maternal grandparents, Heinrich and Maria Wittift, also arrived in South Africa from Germany in the late 1800s. On 18 July 1926, their daughter, Irmgard Wittift, married 24-year-old Karl Stegen. Karl inherited the family farm at Bardefontein and settled there. They had six children. Their fourth child, Erlo Stegen was born on 2 March 1935. Throughout his childhood, on various occasions, we noticed that there were some powers which tried to annihilate him, to kill him. One day he fell off the table and he was concussed and really we thought he wouldn't make it. On two occasions he, he nearly choked to death, so he, we went through a very, very tough time. Today we know it was the evil one who didn't want him to live. And through that he was always a very sickly child. He was always a very shy and timid person. In his young days as a child, we grew up together. 
We'd walk to school together, come back home, go to the orchard. We'd play together, look for eggs everywhere in the haystacks and the cattle crawl because they were free running fowls there. Erno was, he was one of the busy types. He was, he was always busy planting and reaping and selling much more than I was, I was older. He loved farming. He always was busy planting something or whether it was in the garden or whether it was in the fields. It was just his life. He enjoyed farm life, outdoor life. Are you almost finished? Yeah, almost. How long have you been doing this? I don't know, a few hours. I didn't last 10 minutes on this. Did your father make you do it? No, it's mine. I planted it all. Serious? When the reaping season comes, you'll see. I'll make lots of money. It looks good. Don't you ever think of making your own money? Farming's one of the best ways. People need to eat. Please, we're still kids. We should be enjoying ourselves. I am enjoying myself. Maybe one day when I own my own farm, you can come and help me work on it. <laughs> me farming? What do you want to do? Certainly not farming. I'd rather be a teacher than a farmer. A teacher? It's better than farming. No ways. Being a teacher must be the most boring thing ever. Why? You'd make a good teacher. I'll race you for it. What? Last one to Mars is a teacher. A race? Yeah. Erno attended the nearby Lilienthal Church School. It was a small country school situated on the church grounds. Where I really learned to know him was when we went to school. Walking to school, doing our homework together, and Erlo was very conscientious with his homework, his work. He would do it thoroughly. I was always a little bit, you know, careless. I didn't like homework, but he learned very well. And at school, we had to learn our scripture verses or a psalm or a hymn off by heart. And for me, it was all right, as long as I knew it. But Uncle Erla was thorough in his learning. At school, he was good in, in sport, especially tennis. He enjoyed playing tennis and he was very good at it. He was very good at anything in sport. I remember I played tennis with him 
He was six years younger than I, but we played together as though he was one of us. In school, if we had uh, games, you know, like rounders, or if we had to have two sides, eh? he would be the first one who was picked always, because he was always so good. In his youth, Erlo experienced a great deal of success in many areas of his life, but he felt a lack in his spiritual life. His family were traditional Christians who attended church every Sunday. As much as Ulla resented the idea of going to church, he decided to endure it, and when he grew up, throw it all overboard. But in 1948, when Ulla was 13 years old, a new minister was assigned to their church at Lilienthal. Initially, the congregation was not very fond of him, but he was certainly one of the most talented preachers they had ever heard. He could expound the Bible to such an extent and it just took us, went with us and we, we just loved the special meetings during the week. We had Bible studies. The Bible stories we heard, scripture, seemed to be new and alive. Something had happened, a hunger came into our hearts and he had found the answer and he passed on the answer. We needed to know the Lord. We needed to have a meeting with the Lord. He spoke about Nicodemus being born again. He preached the word of God in such a way that we were touched by the messages and that's where Erlo came to the Lord. And once he had really found the Lord, there was nothing that could hold him back. He was always an example to me. I remember his parents came to visit us one Saturday. And I said, where's Erlo? And Tatagadi, his mother, said, he's busy reading the New Testament. He wants to read it through just in one go. And he said, no, he wouldn't come along. He'd rather read his New Testament. Oh, I said, and that was how he was. At that young age, Erlo loved his Bible and carried his copy of the New Testament with him wherever he went. As a teenager of 16, he felt a strong desire for other people to also experience the gospel as he had experienced it. He later felt a calling to preach to the Zulu people. In his early youth already, he went around, visited the Zulu people. He preached to them. It was immaterial to him whether it was inside the house or outside. He had a heart to save, to tell them the gospel and that people turn to the Lord and depart from all evil. Although he was very attached to home, but the calling of the Lord was more important to him than anything else. He was prepared to forsake everything. The gospel became his life, his ambition. From 1952, to 1954, Erlo attended Bible House Bible College in Pretoria, where he studied under the tutelage of Anton Engelbrecht. On completion of his training, he continued with his ministry to the Zulu people. In the beginning, he, a lot he went on foot, and then later he had a bicycle, and then God supplied a pickup and he had one desire to have a tent which he could pitch anywhere, wherever he went. When he moved the tents, it was usually for a few months where he was, where he lived alone. He went to Umzumbi and pitched his tent there. And he stayed, I think, in a caravan. And there was a hen 
that laid an egg in the tent. So he took the egg to the owner to give it to the owner. But the owner said, no, if she's laid the egg in the tent, it's yours. And so every day that hen laid an egg in the tent, which was very wonderful, and Erlo had his daily egg for breakfast. That was so wonderful to me. Kumbula lem nambiti, ma vis kotela, no mestela, but kwa kunyagi ten, but is a bit bazam, but bal kwaza no ma bar shisa. Gayazi de lonces ya figa ma pumlia sin, so what to Joshua menisa shona. Babet bar shabit and batola zoom as well, but the beko wing of his himself. Banding he does, since the Ungulungula fell out on Figella and all the detente la Kelly Lord. God continued to help Erlo. From very early on in his ministry, he had purposed to be a true minister of the gospel and not just play church. For many years, he continued traveling the country, holding services and trying to teach people about God. I remember I was working at that time and my parents were looking after a shop for his brother at Kingscliff. And Erlo stayed with them there. For months on end, he was like a son in the home. And he had pitched his tent at Tibini, a place not far away from there. I loved going with him when he preached. And it was through him that I went to one of Bengal's services in Guamashu for the first time. We got there, the tent was full. And I will never forget, it was the first time I saw the heart pictures. And he brought sin out so crude and so real, no frills attached. Later, Erlo invited him to come to his parents' home. They had a huge shed there and he had services and invited uh, Reverend Bingo to come and take the services. I went to help with the cooking, which was so wonderful to be with them and to listen and to be involved with the gospel. Wherever he went, he found that the people were very open for the gospel and many many people hundreds of people came to listen to the message <laughs> I During his ministry he said when I start I start big people come but the longer I preach and stay at one place the people get less and less and he said the Lord Jesus started small and the work grew and grew and grew. And he starts big and the work gets smaller and smaller. That made him very unhappy. With time, as Erlo preached, he came to realize that the Zulus were more loyal to the ways of their ancestors. So he prayed for wisdom to be able to convince the people that God was not only the God of the whites, but of all nations. At that stage, people streamed to the services in their hundreds, intent to hear what this white preacher in their area had to say. Adam no eba unkulunkulu, eba tembisu misia. Kwa ze guaba, umaria intopi, ikulelo mmoyo ngwezi. Who 
wangu munde mtabe noma ishai na noma sulumani noma ihindu unkulunkulu kashukanisi namsha iskati sokuti noma cp isizwe phansi komthunzi welanga holwe ivangeli musani uyihlupha niyeleza ngomeni niyothatha manga nase nyangeni wazani ku Jesu u Jesu uyikhambi noma imshadi ngalungile musani uyihlupha nihambe nifuna umuntu othanda wazani ku Jesu ngoba zonke izinto ziyaguquka kodwa yena kaguquki undisi sacela ukubuza ukuthi kuyiqinisa wanga nganani lokho kushona ehe iqinisa ukuthi umfundisi sengizothola ukusizakala yena indoda kazi amagula ngoko engqondo ekhaya kuphi uyibangani ukuya ekhaya ngafika ngemoto iya nge ayingeni imoto umfundisi kodwa nje uhamba nje ingxenyana ebanga nayo ushiye imoto lapho usuthi uhamba hamba kancane ulungileyo ayi ngabonga kakhulu nangisindisela Ola was led to the woman's house and when he saw the possessed girl he was astounded the situation was a lot worse than he had anticipated she had been tied with wire because she would break anything that was weaker the entire tribe knew about her because of the havoc she caused but Ola was determined to try and pray for her healing for he thought that if she was healed the tribe would hear about it and also get converted So Ola requested a room on the farm from his parents where the girl could stay while he and his co-workers prayed for her. His parents agreed and prepared a well-furnished room for the girl. That room looked like a pigsty in a short time. And they prayed for weeks, maybe for months, but she wasn't healed. And that made him very very despondent and he said if we read in the bible it was different and if i look at my ministry i see i lack something ulo could not understand why the lord had kept quiet and not answered their prayers he had to take the girl back to her mother unhealed he prayed that she would never again have to return to their area because he could not face the people no 1962 lapho siqala ukubona umlungu kwawinde nkulu kuthina manje sembona sithanda amagap la akhe nazinyweni le ekuphona amagolide manje sifikile ze group sifike lokho sijengisana le lento yakhe ngamfundisi esitekeni wayedomeke tende kwamaphumu eh uma wami eh uhilda dube oyena wasicela ukuthi engathi singabanjani sifike nathi etendi sizozwa lezinkonzo ezenziwa usitekeni kwamaphumu uma sengifika khona ngawubona umehluko ngathola ukuthi umuntu uyakwazi ukuthi alungise ahlukane nesongo ngangisebenza sibedlela emphumulo sahamba saya enkonzweni etendeni sithi sewudlala sohleka ndizothe khona umfundisi oqeqeshayi izimangalisa aqephuza njengendlela emangalisayo sahamba sithi sohle ukuthi ovofwe kwangubamba kalelo langa bekumangalisa ukuthi omhlobe aqoqe nathi akhululeke ngoba thina phela besazi ukuthi uma uhlangana nomhlobe eyi ufanele uhlehle ngoba uzokukhathela kodwa lo oqoqa ngevangeli ohlele khululekile kanye nathi unjani umuntu onjani ilapho sibone khona ukuthi ikantu ukukholwa kukhona kwakumuntu wethu ngimfundisi wayifana nomuntu wayemhlophe nje ngo ngoyebala kodwa waye umuntu tu uma ethatha imngcwabo yabantu abansundu yena akathatha inkonzo 
umaze gritwa la paya na ya bambi speto akiba legene la bantu akiba nita bantu ba manga lulu au mfundis kotra lo kubegwa nza kaku esa simazi nga kogustegi uma ela petindi ama tulu jwa iwa tula maise teko liko ota kwa beteli mbani au maeti futu uma eti ekule ekule li tingo mlande lujisu kwa wenga tisesi ya mbona nga mehe aituli sange kasi lefa ke kasi lefa Ezambusfundisa. <laughs> Umfundisi, why is a figure's kasha and never a pum? Sixty two, sixty three, sixty four, sixty five. What can I can swing up with a visa band for sixty five? Eighteen year shoe peg. Gia figada, the shumayade, a penduga band. What he always said there is something lacking somewhere. He always blamed the people. He blamed the world. Until he realized that he said maybe the fault lies with me, with us Christians. Babanda, Ebandendo Kala, Bandu Suku, no Suku. What do I want me? I remember so clearly one day where he said, I can't carry on any longer. Let us seek God and you. Let us take the Bible and read the Bible and find whether we can't find the key that God does a new thing. There was a hunger for revival in Erlo's heart. He would read the books, he would listen. There was Edwin Orr, Hudson Taylor's story, Goforth of China, Duncan Campbell in the Hebrides, Eric Hutchings in Korea, C.T. Studd in the Congo, Revival. That was his dream. That was his goal. That was what he longed for. At Mapumulu, an old cowshed had been made available to Ulo and his co workers. They wasted no time in getting it cleaned up and prepared as their place of prayer and devotion. I remember a small group of people coming together in the morning before we opened the store and after we had closed the business we, they came, we came together again and Uncle Ella started with the book of Acts <laughs> Benza ganja, zatola kuti, ba ba kutola ngokubantu zioni, moya mune, mukondo mune, kuna bibi kuboksenti zue yomundo, okuzo vimba, ungulungu kuta sebent, why seti yena ite vimba ungulungu kuta sebent iso. Yes, 
intebe ikonzi ilufunzu ukudlali tennis. Kutu wa wakutata njenge son, ukuti is katu mkudungula njela son, hambi utandaz. Uti bingbuk is katu gada, uti is katu sese tennis, ngege nis luzek. Elzala, si mbukela futi, elzala. Unkulunkulu be mshuga nkuguti Akfanelu kuti aznage yena Kota ranage unkulunkulu Nmsebenzi lankulunkulu Manje umabanya bandu be mpega Kwe sinskatu benge nasu mbishiskati Sok shefa Kota nje efunu kwenzu msebenzi lankulunkulu kutu pede I remember so well how he sought God with all his heart. So often he was sleeping next to our bedroom. So often we'd hear him agonizing, crying, seeking God with all his heart. <laughs> He was seeking God that he forgot everything, that he was only concerned about one thing, it's to finding God, because in the Bible we read that if we seek him with all our hearts, we shall find him. In the end, on the Aila, Sastanda as a stella, stella, Kunkudum Gulu sitting cosy, Esa Ube Pagati Wig, Esa Uspusis, who says he said Moyo in Duel, Abe Pagati Way to Assize, as Bonagalise, Ascense Lumosawak, was seven of Pagati Way to. Was Caesar West Everything was new and we experienced God in, in a real way that God was still alive. All of a sudden we saw God in our midst, God bringing people in, God convicting people of their sins. And at the same time, we experienced healings. We experienced people being set free from bondage, from witchcraft. We experienced it over and over. Oh, it was wonderful. To me, a highlight was when the witch came and she said, she's bound with chains from hell and how God set her free from these demonic powers. That was something wonderful. We saw 
crippled people. They brought them in, they carried them in. And during prayer, we all of a sudden saw these people getting up and they could walk. Today there are millions of people where their soul is sick, sick, sick. And if God heals the soul, that is the greatest miracle on earth. And that to us, right from the beginning of the revival, was the greatest thing to see people's soul being healed. And we give all the honor and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who in His grace and mercy came down and revealed Himself to us in such a way that we know today that He's alive. Mapumulo wasn't really the right place for having many people there. It was a difficult time at that time. People needed to have permits to go there and then God made it possible for them to come here to Sizabatu. We came with our, our workers, we opened up um, a, a little spot amongst the trees, we dug out the stumps and then came with tractors and worked. Most of the people didn't even have fuel that the tractors could move. And I remember when we had leveled and uh, dug foundations of the first building that um, Dad said, now tomorrow, where's the cement? And Dad went and asked him whether he couldn't have cement on on tick. So the next morning he came along and he had a load, a pickup load of of cement, and we started pouring the foundation. The first building. Uh, we were home one day, and Earl found, and he says, "You know what? The first building's finished. We've got a kitchen. He's got his bedroom." and we can have 60 people to sleep. Wow, I said, 60 people to sleep. That was wonderful. In Lyokala, Kwaba Lape, Eguli, Kwabu Kona Makame Lao Tu, Lala Besfaza Nengala, Lala Matutanga. Lala Makame Loka Lao Tu, Ulala Ubumfundis, I remember the first time we came and there was nothing here. Nothing. Wattle trees a little tuck shop where they sold odds and ends. Their kitchen was not a building, but they had pots and corrugated iron over. That was the kitchen. And I remember they were busy, busy planting potatoes. It must have been somewhere where Uncle Friedel's house is now, where they had a, plowed a field and they were planting potatoes. Such a la macabish, such a la madumbe, who could peel a weight, sa pilis or uchala. Sassing in a luto, sassy peeler, gunsing, wakiwa lemishin, 
ya kutinga imtandazo ungulunkulu wayefuna sibone ngempela ukuthi siyakholelwa yini ukuthi ungulunkulu wayimanga I said to him once I said earlier you should get married with this work you need to be married oh no he was a confirmed bachelor but miracles happened and one day I got a call from his dad he says guess what I said I don't know he said Bello's engaged guess to who I said must be Kay Dahl how do you know he said I said nobody told me I thought somebody had told me no, I think it was the Lord who had whispered in my ear by then. To me, she was, she could have been the only one whom, who was fit and who was brave enough to get into the work and be, the, be Elu's wife. I knew her as an unmarried person already. She was a teacher at, uh, I think, at Newcastle at that time. And she sometimes even visited us for a free weekend or so at Mapomulo. And uh, she was a happy person. And the, our children just loved her. Our girls, they were like friends with her, although she was a bit older than them. But they were always glad if Kay came. That was something special for them. I remember going to her and asking her whether she would get married to him. But the condition was the Lord first, then the work, and then her. And she said, yes, gladly. She wants him to serve God with all his heart. <laughs> Ngoba nanga leso skate mtela. Wachelo, watiwa. Ipila impilo. Yabansundu ngobu nkulu nkulu wangbizelo wabansundu. Uyavuma yintu yonke leo ndue was women. Tombo zanyavu. The wedding was at, at our birth farm. At my dad's. We had a big shed and we arranged everything in there but the main thing was then all the people that wanted to come to, to bring them. We didn't even have lorries and vehicles to, to bring the people so it was quite, quite a thing to collect the people who wanted to come. <laughs> Zamake why a mundo is in manga? Quaba mawe to the bell and the scattered figure, such a blela, who would stole mawe. 
wae standa songe bunge kugutkonu munda mketayo noma itina isla sizi sebens noma ngabe kufigu mundu wanga panthe umeze laikaya kwa sizabandu ezote lusizo nome vagashile umama u umama umakoti ubeme mugela jenge nganya begu umawetu songe ngempela ngempela she welcomed the people very much and she even for the for the black people she was such an example because she did it as they would do it she would be prepared to kneel down in front of a, a, a black person to give him his tea and so forth really very very humble in that way the prince Putelezi once said of Kay she was no ordinary woman. Indeed, she had the good qualities of a wife, and she supported her husband and strengthened his ministry, while effectively serving God in her own capacity as well. She was a tower of strength to Reverend Stegan, supporting him no matter where his ministry called him to be, and no matter what the circumstances. <laughs> Sati atulinga, sati wa uzo shinja ni kubopende inga ni zaki ni wanga shinja. Unjalo betu mdua, ame se balve atnangu uswanda imkambe ngut ngobangonde lo ngela lebanda ngobami nangi koga ning inga tele ngoskazwa. As most people know, they had six daughters and she was a good mother to them. And she, I think, also a help even spiritually and I think she was a real example in the house and I always marveled at the way she worked and what she did and how she was humble and uh, uh, she never thought of herself. She was alone a lot. She had to go away very often and but she was absolutely prepared for that and she stayed at home, did her duties with the house, with the children as a good housewife would do. She was, I can say in three words, she was very close to be an angel. That is how I can only describe her. I remember one day I came and it was late already in the evening and she had a house full of people and I said, but Kay, where will you sleep? Because their bedroom was given up as well. She says, don't worry, I'll find a corner somewhere. And that was her life. That was what Kay was like. Willing just to give and give. And she's taught her children the same. And it is no wonder that the king himself came to fetch her. What a wonderful thing. May we learn to be servants, to be servant, just too willing to serve. Kay passed into glory on 26 November 2002. Throughout the 70s, the place that was sugarcane fields and wattle plantations slowly took on the form of a mission station. People came daily to Ulo and his co-workers for spiritual help. More accommodation had to be made available, and so dormitories were built. In addition, rondavals were constructed, where people could stay on a more permanent basis. Although Erlo never encouraged people to leave their churches and homes, there were many who felt called to help him directly with work on the mission. Erlo began with only six co-workers. But over the years, the number has increased to over 165 and an extra 1,400 mission residents who assist in the work. 
Some of the co-workers formed a choir, which often accompanies Erlo on our creatures. In 1973, Tofos Dube, a young co-worker of 21 years of age, fell ill and passed away. When everyone had come to accept that she was with the Lord, she came to life. People marveled when she told them that the Lord had sent her back from heaven. She felt led to initiate a ministry amongst the youth. The young people of the congregation were gathered at the very first youth services in 1974. At those services, many young people were helped spiritually and Ulla realized that this was of the Lord. Youth services were often held after that and it has since become a biannual event. Due to the increasing number of people, buildings became too small for the services and tents had to be pitched. There were times when services were held outdoors since there was just no building that was large enough. An auditorium was built that had a seating capacity of 10,000. The building, which was opened in 1990, took 10 years to construct. Eighteen years later, the building was destroyed by an accidental fire. Within a year, it was rebuilt and reopened in April 2009. From an outdoor shelter with big black pots, the kitchen has expanded. The dining hall serves as a place where people can come on a daily basis and have a meal. Many people on the mission assist in projects which serve as an income to help with mission expenses and spread the gospel. The place that was once a sugarcane and wattle farm has become largely an avocado farm. Hothouse production began in the early 90s and has since expanded. Sweet peppers are produced at an average of 8 tons per week. The mission started out with just one cow, which Ulla bought. Later they acquired more cows, and that has become successful as the Lord blessed it. Milk and yogurt were first produced at KSB Dairy in 1989. In 2003, KSB Dairy took on the new name of Bon Lay Dairy. A child once shared a vision with Urlo. The child was shown a treasure under the ground of the mission. But instead of a treasure of silver or gold, water was found. This water was so pure that it could be bottled from the spring. From the first bottling plant in 1998, Aquile has grown into a well-known water brand. In the early days, a small wooden tuck shop supplied very basic necessities. Over the years, the needs of the people grew and a larger shop was built. In 2011, a supermarket with a butchery and bakery was opened which supports the mission residents as well as the surrounding community. In the 1980s, the co-workers on the mission felt that they could not send their children to public schools any longer since the children were taught things which contradicted their Christian beliefs. Ulo then opened a school on the mission for the children of his co-workers in 1986. His wife Kay, who was a trained teacher, became the first principal of Domino Savite School. The school has recently celebrated 25 years of education and still offers quality education to about 300 students. Cedar College of Education was established in 1994 to train Christian teachers. Due to Erlo's frequent travels, the mission invested in a small aeroplane and leveled out an airstrip on the mission. The aeroplane enables him to get to places which would otherwise take hours by car.
if the gospel is preached in truth, it's very, very infectious. When people hear of it, when people see it, they are drawn to it. And through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, people were drawn to the work here at Sisabantu from all over the world. And that's how it spread. That's how the word spread to even to other countries, to overseas, whoever heard of it, whoever was blessed. And that is the beauty about it. If you have been blessed by the things of the Lord, you can't keep quiet. You want others to hear about it as well. Over the years, Erlo has received invitations from different places all over the world. He travels far and wide, visiting countries like France, Russia, Korea, Australia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Israel, and many others. When Uncle Friedel and Uncle Erlo went to Germany the first time, we started, we cried here. We didn't have any contact with each other. Then we cried and said, God, they've got no money. They're just going there. Will they be accepted? We couldn't believe it that when they came back and said, the people want it. They even said, why do you stay, stay away so long? That when we heard it, when they came here, that we cried tears, thank God. But it, it, it was so through as the wave was gushing over us. It was God's, God's work, God's work which he did. As the gospel touched more and more lives, the work of Kwasizabantu spread across the globe. Since 1970, over 40 Kwasizabantu branches have been established in South Africa and over 25 branches worldwide. God has greatly blessed the work, and it has grown immensely, but Erlo has never lost his focus. For over 60 years, he has remained committed to his calling to minister to people's needs. He continues to witness about the saving power of Jesus Christ, giving every minute of his time to serve others. <laughs> Wasumaze, Babum Fundisi, Wasipa no Guja, Was Vulera Ne Vande, Marco Cosaja, Masonella Bantu, Bam Fundisi, Yas Mabella Bon, Wabue Wakelage, Ubabunduna, Umzomi, Umuzi, Omusera Cool, Honestes, Parat, Enchi, Wam Mabella Nae in Dunayake, Ubaba Umzomi. Wasala Ukoska Zwake, Wamonja, Wampakoke, Uksetis Venyak, 
mkunuge mkunukulu kababu mfundi singoba wenza imanga ni imanga liso ezwe ndagiti wazo sputula nange nkolo wakutula bantu salizwa ifangili ngigwazile ukuti gifundi agiena ngenda bayoguti ube hambu Uguaz utube panzi na sisongi skati Konde nga ingi kotwe la ati Baba Sibisi Ungavumi ugutinwa Ungatinwa umagunezi nto zenzeka Gifundile lapu Gifundile inzela zu kulega Hilo oko ngenze guti ngikule One thing we have learned from, from him is If you obey That was one of the first things God taught my brother to do what he tells us to do. He was the one who taught people to obey God, which people in this world don't know. They have their own ideas, they have their own intellect, and that's where, where they go, that's what they, that's what they live. And he is an example. He lives and does that which God wants. He lives in obedience to God, which saved me, and that's why we learn from him. May we learn from him, first of all, to serve. The Lord Jesus said, Learn of me. Ella learned that lesson. May we learn to be servants, to be willing to be nothing, just there for him. 100% he said, not 90, he said 100%. And when we never get into a comfort zone and think we've achieved, we've arrived, may that hunger for God, for his righteousness, be with us. And may we lift the banner of victory he has experienced slander. He has experienced hurt, pain, indescribable. He lifts up the banner of victory. And may we run the race, not looking to the left or to the right, but looking to the Lord and going on and being there to the end where the Lord can say, you've been faithful to the end.